Chapter 4, Mishnah 4. The next several Mishnahs discuss enactments related to a Canaanite slave, i.e. a non-Jewish slave owned by a Jew. If a Canaanite slave was captured by a raiding army and his master gave up hope of recovering him, but then other Jews ransomed him, ransomed him, the slave's status depends on the purpose for which they ransomed him. If they ransomed him to be their slave, he is enslaved. Since the original owner despaired of ever getting the slave back, the army that captured him became his new master. Later, when the other Jews redeemed him from the army, they became his new masters. If, however, they ransomed him to be a free man, he is not enslaved. Rather, he goes free. The next Tana disagrees. Rabban Shimon, Shimon ben Gamliel says, Whether the other Jews ransomed him for this purpose, i.e. to be their slave, or for that purpose, i.e. to be a free man, he is still the slave of the original master. Even though the original master gave up hope of recovering him, the sages decreed that the slave be returned to him in order to prevent other slaves from surrendering to raiding armies and thereby escape the control of their masters. Another enactment regarding a Canaanite slave. Regarding a slave who is designated by his master for others, i.e. lenders, to whom the master owns, owes money, as an apotiki, that is, future payment for the debt, but then, before the debt was paid, his master freed him, the law is as follows. By the letter of the law, the slave is not obligated in any way to the lender, since his master freed him and thereby canceled his designation as payment for the loan. Nevertheless, for the benefit of society, that is to prevent the lender from falsely claiming that the freed man is now his slave, we force his second master, i.e. the lender, who is supposed to receive him as payment for the loan, to make him a free man. Even though the lender does not own the slave, he must write a freedom document for him. And the slave must write a contract for his market value and give the contract to the lender. Eventually, when the freed slave has acquired that amount of money, he must pay it to the lender. The next Tana disagrees. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel says, The slave does not write the contract. Rather, the one who freed him, i.e. the original master, writes it. Since the original master was the one who freed him and thereby caused a loss to the lender, he, not the slave, must write a contract stating that he owes the lender the value of the slave and he is the one who pays him.